The Android OS has been around since 2008, and in that time its UI has been reinvented several times over. The original Android interface was bare bones and pretty ugly by modern standards. It wasn't until Android 4.0 three years later that there was any kind of overarching design language for Android phones. The look and feel of Android has been constantly evolving since then. Often just with baby steps forwards, but sometimes with giant leaps ahead like the introduction of material design in 2014. Android 12 gives us the platform's third big all-encompassing redesign in the form of Material U, an ambitious effort to make Android more personal with individual colour schemes plucked from the Material palette. So as we enter the fourth design era of Android, it's time to revisit the past 13 years of Android UI and remember how we got here. Take a set to subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss future videos, and we'll get started. For the first couple of years of its existence, Android lacked any real strong design direction. From Android 1.0 to 2.2 Froyo, the look and feel of the OS was best described as generic, functional, and bland. Early Android had chunky icons, grey tinted menus, and a whole lot of grey. This no-frills aesthetic made sense for the small, low-resolution phone screens of the time, and while Google was kinda making phones in the form of the T-Mobile G1 and later the Nexus One, most people would experience Android through the lens of an all-consuming manufacturer skin, like HTC Sense or Samsung TouchWiz. The look and feel of stock Android just didn't matter that much when the vast majority weren't using anything close to it. Nevertheless, looking back at Android 1 and Android 2, many of the key recognisable Android design elements are present. Multi-page home screens with widget support, the app drawer and notification pulldown are all there, even if they are wrapped in a UI that looks more like a 90s desktop computer than the modern Android of today. Google's launch of the Nexus One in 2009 coincided with some minor design tweaks to Android, like this fancy 3D animated grid of apps, and eventually shortcuts to the phone and browser were added as well, but basically this was stock Android until late 2010, fairly dull, cold and utilitarian. In mid-2010, Google hired this guy, Matthias Duarte, first as the design director of Android, then eventually for the whole of the company, and he really set the course for Android's UI over the following decade. Duarte was hired right as Google was about to ship Android 2.3 Gingerbread and the Nexus S smartphone, so his influence on Gingerbread was pretty limited. Nevertheless, Android 2.3 was the most significant design overhaul Android had yet seen, with darker colours throughout in a nod to the growing popularity of OLED screens. Android Green was used as an accent colour to highlight icons, and menu presses were punctuated by flashes of orange. Otherwise though, this was very much a continuation of the old look Android. The arrival of the first tablet-specific version of Android really changed everything though, and Duarte's influence can much more clearly be seen in Android 3.0 Honeycomb. Released in early 2011, Honeycomb powered early iPad rivals and sported a bold sci-fi style interface with a blue and deep purple colour palette. This version introduced us to on-screen keys, a navigation paradigm that is still with us on some Android phones today. Doing away with the old menu and search buttons from Gingerbread, Honeycomb devices can be navigated with three virtual navigation keys, Home, Back and Recent Apps. Pushing that new Recents key fired up Android's newly revamped Task Switcher, showing a small preview of running apps in a scrollable list. Honeycomb was rushed out to combat the iPad and served as kind of a prototype of what was coming later in 2011, Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich and the new Hollow design language. That October, Matisse Duarte appeared on stage at the Hong Kong launch event for Google and Samsung's new Galaxy Nexus, the first phone running Android 4.0. We asked ourselves for the first time, what is the soul of Android? We wanted simple typographic layouts with plenty of white space, eliminating lines and boxes and unnecessary decoration. And we wanted to imbue everything with subtle animation and delightful flourishes to really make Android come alive. So let's see it in action. Hollow built on what had been started with a Honeycomb release, adding the new font, Roboto, which is still the default on most Android devices today. Unlike Droid Sans, which it replaced, Roboto was built for the high-density displays that were starting to become common at the time, giving a more modern appearance and pleasant reading experience. Elsewhere, the beveled edges and embossed buttons and menus were excised from Android, replaced with a less cluttered and more abstract look. Hollow Blue was the primary accent colour for Ice Cream Sandwich and the subsequent Jelly Bean release, making Android 4 seem sharp and futuristic, though distinctly less Tron-influenced than Honeycomb had been. 
The darker colour palette remained though and seemed a good fit for the Galaxy Nexus in particular with its big OLED display. Most major Android manufacturers would continue to do their own thing though. The likes of Samsung, LG and HTC once again plastered Android with their own custom interface layers, running roughshod over hollow to differentiate their own products. As a result, a Samsung phone running ice cream sandwich looked pretty much the same as a Samsung phone running gingerbread. On a Galaxy phone of the time, you'd have to look really hard to see any of the work from Duarte or his team. Early Holo was a pretty rigid design language though and couldn't easily be married to a company's own design preferences. For example, the distinctive Holo Blue was hardwired in at the time with no easy way to change it. Android 4.4 KitKat tamed Holo somewhat, replacing blue accents with brighter whites, making for a better fit alongside apps, wallpapers and icons with a more diverse colour palette. And this would eventually segue into the second great big Android redesign that occurred in 2014. At Google I.O. 2014 in San Francisco, Matthias Duarte, in his new role as VP of Design for the whole of Google, unveiled Material Design. What if there was an intelligent material that was as simple as paper, but could transform and change shape in response to touch? We drew inspiration from paper and ink. However, unlike real paper, our digital material can expand, reform, and reshape intelligently. Just as Holo had arrived for high-resolution phone screens going mainstream around the end of 2011, Material Design took advantage of the improved graphical horsepower of the phones available around the middle of the 2010s. But it wasn't just for phones. Material Design would also live on smartwatches, tablets, Chromebooks, and the web. We're giving designers familiar tools, like baseline grids that work across screens. And this will allow you to start with a design on a phone and logically and easily bring that same design to tablets and laptops. Material design was presented as geometric, highly layered, with a vibrant color palette and delightful animations. Animated flourishes like these set material apps apart from the earlier hollow design language and remain a major part of how Android looks today. The original material sizzle reel showcased all this stuff along with highly vibrant hues and layer heavy apps with slick animations that were never quite fully realized when the design language went live in Android 5.0 Lollipop. The real world version of material design ended up being a bit more conservative as Google scrambled to meet deadlines around the end of 2014. Android was a big ship to steer and the materialization of the OS and its apps ended up being a multi-year process. Nevertheless, material design and Android Lollipop introduced a bunch of key design elements that remained for more than half a decade. The floating action button was the go-to location for things like starting a new message in a texting app or adding an item to a list. Slide-out hamburger menus emerged as a favorite way to navigate between the major areas of an app. And the button press and overflow flourishes that debuted with material design in Android 5 stuck around all the way through to Android 11. And material design was more readily incorporated into manufacturers' Android skins compared to Holo, in part thanks to the new design language being more open to customization, as well as Google starting to wield more control over the way Android looked and behaved. Material was never supposed to be a static set of guidelines though, and it continued to evolve with successive Android releases. The Android 6 Marshmallow release in 2015 pivoted away from some of those more saturated colors. The Rolodex-style recent apps menu was eventually decommissioned in Android 9, and those hamburger-style navigation menus clashed with Android 10's gesture navigation and have now been retired from most apps. In 2016, Google unveiled its first Pixel phones, leading to a further evolution in material design and a divergence from its original 2014 vision. As subsequent Pixel phones arrived, Google the hardware maker looked to differentiate its phone software even further. Google apps became less colorful, instead pushing a clean white and blue color scheme. By 2020, most core Google apps like Photos, Gmail, News and Maps had adopted this material theme aesthetic, along with more iPhone-like navigation buttons. The Google apps of 2020 were a far cry from the colorful material prototype of 2014. Fortunately though, a colorful material makeover was planned for the next version of Android in 2021. Seven years on from the debut of Material Design, the Google I.O. conference was once again the venue for a major Android design announcement. And Matthias Duarte returned to the stage in Mountain View to showcase Material U, the next iteration of Google's design language in Android 12. Instead of Google Blue, we imagined Material U, a new design that includes you as a co-creator. 
letting you transform the look and feel of all your apps by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's eye. The magic behind Material U was a project known internally at Google as Monet. Monet could examine your chosen home screen background, pick out complementary colors from the material palette, and use them to customize the apps on your phone. More muted hues, for example, might be used for backgrounds, while vibrant eye-catching colors might be applied to important buttons or switches. In contrast to the old digital paper concept, Material U appears flatter and more abstract. The layers of the UI are still there, as you can see here, but the shadows and sharp edges of Android Lollipop are gone, replaced with rounded corners with wide radiuses. Even home screen widgets have been overhauled with these rounded corners. Material U also acts as something of an antidote to those dull-looking white and blue Google apps we've become accustomed to recently. Android 12 can help you pick a customized palette that it knows will look good in apps, menus, and on the Pixel 6, even home screen widgets. It's a more personal, more expressive design approach to what is, after all, the most personal computer you own. And while the old faithful Roboto typeface is still used in places, Material U emphasizes Google Sans, the company's official font, which packs a bit more personality. On Pixel phones, Google Sans is used everywhere, from icon captions to menus in the settings app, and is scaled up on Android 12's lock screen to fill the display with a colored clock when there are no pending notifications. The animated flourishes in Material U are also a natural evolution of material design. The ambient display clock springs to life when the phone is picked up, becoming bolder and more colorful. And depending on how you lock or unlock your phone, an animated aura will accompany that action. Material U debuts in Google Pixel phones in fall 2021, and it's likely some other Android manufacturers will include it with their Android 12 updates as well. However, just as it was with hollow and material design, there's no guarantee phone makers will follow Google's lead. Plus, Android 12 users will also have to wait for third-party developers to update their apps to support Material U's palette swapping capabilities. Nevertheless, what we've seen in Material U so far gives Android in general, and Google Pixel phones in particular, a strong design identity, with a design language well fitted to phones, watches, tablets, and other smart services for the rest of the decade. That's it for now. If history is any indicator, we'll be checking in around 2026 to see where material design is headed next. But we'll have plenty of great videos for you before then, so be sure to subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.